Kenneth, you, you've been in this space for a, a, a good a good time and have seen both companies succeed and fail in these things as you've consulted and worked and helped implement. So what about making things easy? How important is the automation? Because ultimately, if they're easy, they're engaged, and they're productive, then from a budgetary perspective, they get renewed. So what, what have you seen out there as best practices, with, uh, pros and cons, or the dangers and pitfalls? You know, I think it's a it's a really important point that people need to think about. It. I know there's a saying: um, everybody can everybody can make it complex, not everybody can make it easy. Something it goes something like that. But and it's so true. People, especially vendors, large vendors, they get kind of so caught up in their in, internal world. We've all done this of you know the inner workings that they kind of forget about the partner facing side of things. So I'd say, firstly, you know, it, it's really important to make it easy for partners, firstly, to understand your program, um, what are the requirements to get access to the program, and then once you have access, once they have access to the program, you know, how do you support them in, in taking your brand to market? Um, you know, I always say this, partners have choices to, you know, typically partners would work with, you know, multiple vendors. So if you think about it, they're working with your competition. Um, so, you know, they have choices. We'd say an example, a partner will work with five vendors. Therefore, they have to understand five different MDF programs, what activity is offered in each of those and, and so on. So I'm sure everybody gets the gist of it. Um, time, as they say, is, you know, one of the most precious commodities in, in today's world and especially in, in the channel or partner ecosystem. That's, you know, partners will say, look, we're time crunched. It's not always about price. Um, it, but it is always about ease of doing business and, and being easy to work with. So vendors really need to think about being easy to work with, making your MDF program really accessible to your partners, to, really intuitive as to, you know, if I'm offering you this activity, this much spend, you know, what, what does it mean? So think about delivering your MDF program via your partner portal in a very easy uh, to access way for, for, your, for your partners. Um, long gone are the days of spreadsheets and Google Sheets and all the rest that, you know, you just can't do it. It has to be partner facing. They have to be able to come into your portal, click through to your MDF, make a fund request. Um, and then from you as a vendor's perspective, you know, automating all of those steps that the approval workflow is, is streamlined or automated. It can be as complex as you want under the hood, but so long as you have the automation or the platform to deliver that in place, all of those automation steps can take place very seamlessly. So, you know, it routes to the appropriate person for approval, be that in country, be it regionally, based on budget, it might roll up to somebody more senior and, and so on and so forth. But that must be done in a very fast way because partners aren't going to hang around waiting for, for those approvals or worse still, not knowing if, if those approvals um, have happened. So, you know, kind of put yourself in the partner's shoes. They come in, they make the request, it gets approved fairly quickly, they go off, they do their activities, but now they want to get reimbursed for that. And again, you must make it easy for them to make their claims so that they can come back into your platform and they'll see, you know, just have a quick link to the, the, the original pre-approval or fund request that they made. They click on that and now they simply go and make their claim against it. And in terms of automation of that or ease of doing business, I would say with my vendor hat on now, um, you know, one of the things we always say to people that are doing MDF is when you do your activities, obviously get your activities to Janelle's earlier point aligned with your company strategy. But when you're offering your activities like that, also think about the proofs of performance that goes with your activities. And it's a really good exercise to do when you're launching the program is drill down into what are the proofs of performance that, that will justify that spend with that particular activity. And if you can't do that, you're probably not offering the right activity because you can't. if you can't make them do a proof of performance, and the simplest example I can give is, I'm gonna give you some money to do lead generation. Um, they should be, you know, any partner should be easily able to provide a list of leads. Those leads should be validated online, you know, automatically uploaded, which in turn, as a vendor, it takes away a lot of overhead for your auditing process. So think about automating your auditing process or reducing it to a minimum, you know, there's always uh, some set of eyes have to go on these things, but you can really reduce that to a minimum, which coming back with my partner hat on, if you can streamline the approval process to get that funding back out to the partners, they love you a lot for that, right? 
And inversely, if you wait months to do that, they don't love you so much for doing that. So you need to be able to pay them quickly, but you need to be able to know and they need to be able to prove to you they did do that activity correctly and that they can prove they've done it because that then ties us back to our old friend ROI. Okay, so you have to have all of the, the moving parts in place. So now you've done, you've given them funding, they've done the activity, they've made their claim, you've audited. So now you're coming into the situation of, okay, now I need to know, did that work? Because somewhere down the road very soon, my finance team are going to ask, show me the ROI of the program. And you yourself want to know it, regardless of finance. You know, any good program manager wants to know if it's working. And if it's not working, that's okay too. But now at least you know it's not working. You can spend your money on something else that is working or redirect funds to things that are working. So there, there's an awful lot of moving parts, JD, in an MDF program from soup to nuts. There really is. In fact, you know, we do these for a lot of vendors. It is one of the harder programs to automate. Um, and it, it, on the internal or the vendor facing view, what's really critical is to have those reports and dashboards that, you know, the Daves and Janelles of the world can actually pop into and say, okay, I'm offering this activity. How much has been drawn down? How many leads in my simple example have I got? How many of those have turned into deal regs? How many have turned into opportunities? And how many of those have closed? And that could take multiple quarters from start to finish. That's why, you know, you said it, JD, earlier, everything in the channel is quarters, where in direct business, it might be months. So you want to be able to see that ROI. And it is very much with MDF a function of time. So it might be one, two, three quarters later before that 5K spend is actually showing a closed deal. But then that closed deal could be for a good chunk of money, a lot more than you spent on the MDF request. So hopefully that kind of gives a, a picture of all of the moving parts and why it's so important to automate all of those steps because both from a partner perspective it makes their life a lot easier which is creating competitive advantage for you in the channel ecosystem which is a very busy ecosystem as we all know with all these different partner types etc um, and then internally as a vendor you want your channel teams to be sales focused not spending every you know working hour on on spreadsheets and operations and looking at everything from you know back-end systems to Salesforce, to Oracle, to SAP, et cetera, to understand if it's working or not. So having those, having all of that automated and having that the, the reports in an easy to consume fashion is really important for the, uh, for the channel teams. And we know this year, you know, channel spend is staying flat if not being reduced. So it's a case of uh, doing more for the same or more, more with less basically. Okay. Yeah. More the same, most most definitely, and and some having to deal with less. I, so I think one of my takeaways from that, not to be flip about it, was in general, shared Google spreadsheets and Excel pivot tables um, aren't where either the vendor or the partner want to be spending ninety percent of their time. It's got to be simple for everybody. So what percentage of your eligible partners participate in your MDF program? So would it be, say, less than 25%, 25 to 49%, 50 to 75%, or more than 75%? That would be the dream, really, wouldn't it? And of course, if you don't know what the answer is, we have an option in for that too. So for those offering MDF, are you delivering the program in an automated way or can, are you doing it via a platform? So obviously, we're just asking you for yes or no here in this one. 